Hi, Bob Debu here for Open Studio. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about playing the blues, specifically this uh, composition, Charlie Parker's composition entitled Now is the Time. So the recording that we're referencing today is a duo recording with the great Houston person on the tenor saxophone, one of the most amazing saxophonists ever. And it's a duo album with him and the great Ron Carter on bass. They had a whole series of duo albums. They've got a long history of recordings and playing together. And uh, they've always been fascinating to me uh, in particular. So the blues is foundational, fundamental to playing jazz. At, at any given point, if you're on stage, a blues could get called and you better be ready. Do you know what I mean? So knowing the blues and being able to play over the blues is a kind of a, a bellwether for where you're at in your development too. So as we get maybe more familiar with the form and more familiar with the, the language and the history of the music, the better we get at playing the blues, which also transfers into playing other songs, bringing the blues into other forms or standards or any type of music in the jazz, jazz world. So learning the blues, super crucial. So what we're gonna do today is learn the melody to now's the time. Then we're gonna talk about the typical chord changes to a blues in the in the jazz world that is and then we're going to look at the way Ron Carter is implying different root movements underneath now's the time the way that they're doing it on this particular recording then we're going to get into looking specifically at how Ron plays in this two feel underneath the melody for two choruses if you'd like a free PDF of the transcription we're working from today just click the link downstairs and definitely check out the link to the recording so you can hear this recording that we're referencing today. It's crucial, crucial to hear that and play along with it, absorb the sound, absorb the feel. Let's talk about the melody for Now is the Time. As bass players, a lot of times we don't have the opportunity to play the melody. We should still learn as many melodies as possible because they will. Uh, we might have to play them on stage, A, but B, it helps us to understand how to accompany better. So learn as many blues as, the, as you can. If you already know now's the time, stay tuned because we're gonna say it in a slightly different way. I've transcribed it the way that Houston Person says it on this particular recording. So let's check that out. The typical way to play now's the time, the way that you'll see it, if you did a Google search and looked up a, you know, a PDF or whatever, it would be like this. And that's totally fine. The way that a Houston person says it in this recording is instead of playing that C, he does this. And now it's very subtle the way that he fits that in there, but it's got, it gives it this unique quality, which I really think is interesting. So let's shed the now's the time melody that you see on the screen here down in this octave, and then we'll move it up into the, the next octave higher, where it would be more soloistic or more like we're stating the melody and not clash with the bass lines that we're going to put down here. Well, let's try it out, okay? So one, two, one, two, three, four. So that is more or less the way that Houston Person is saying it in these two choruses leading up. One key element is the That gets played a bunch of different ways. But I hear him doing this where he's doing a drop down. Sometimes you'll hear people do this, right? So the point being that there's multiple ways to say this melody and uh, learn, learn the different ways and find the ways that speak to you, but there is, you know, always going back to the original recording is crucial to know as a point of reference. Let's move this melody up an octave into the register that I was playing in the video when we first started. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Next up, let's talk about the typical root movement that happens underneath this form. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna hear somebody play this particular root movement under now's the time. So like this, one, two, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now I'm just thinking the roots right now. So this is bar three, bar four, go to the four chord. And then we'll hear, and then to the six, which leads us to the two chord right here. And then maybe some kind of turnaround or playing the five there. Let's do it one more time. So F, the one chord, to the four chord, to the one chord, one chord. And this is all we'll be walking or in two there, right? Sometimes this is a little earlier. Six, it's referencing the melody. It's five, one, five. And then the top. So the blues form is of course 12 bars. In this, in this case, it can be extended. There can be other things put into it. That's, this is not a, a definitive video on the blues by any stretch. So now let's check out the root movement, not the bass line or the transcription, but the root movement that Ron is implying with this, this bass line here. Note how it's different than the changes that we just practiced, right? Those typical blues changes. It's similar, same form, but different root movement. One, two, one, two, three, go. Go into the four chord, up a half step. This is a two five to the four. So to B flat, now E flat, A flat, two, Check this out. Here's a flat five, four, three, flat three, flat six, flat two, one, something like that. One, two. Great. So just some key moments in there to note. All right, we're starting off on the one chord. We're going to the four chord, nothing crazy there. A half step up, leading us to the, uh, you know, like a, a new two five that's gonna lead to the four chord. So this C minor seven is like a two of B flat. F seven is a five of B flat, which here we are. That's the four chord. Now, rhythmically, this is a little bit different because Ron is playing this root progression underneath the melody. So we wanna think about when this is falling, where we're moving around in these changes, but we're starting on the four and then going up in the cycle of fourths. E flat to A flat to D flat and it fits with the melody on top it's stark to hear the, the difference and the contrast in the different root choices there so again the four chord up a fourth up a fourth again up a fourth one more time right and now he's at the, the two chord of F which is G five and then something like a three mm, mm, to get us back to the five again now here the second chorus He's playing a B natural, so it's a tritone substitution of the one chord. Walking around, walking down chromatically. Now up and forth, down a half step to get to the root, right? So we found some gravity there. We got back to the root by the end. Up a fourth to the four chord. Up a half step. The one chord with a five in the bass. C sharp. You could call this C sharp diminished, right? Or I think you could call it A7 with a, which, with a C sharp in the bass, which is going to be the five chord leading into D7. So this is A7 over C sharp, but it's going to D7. That's the whole point. That D7 is the six chord or a new five to get us to the G minor, G minor to C7. And then we're really back to one there, okay? So what we've done so far is we've talked about the blues form, we've looked at the melody, the way that Houston person is, is phrasing it in this particular recording. Then we've talked about the typical chord changes to an F blues that one might play on now is the time, just so we have our baseline, we have our fundamentals together. Then we looked at the, the, the root progression that Ron is implying in the transcription that, uh, that you heard earlier, like at the beginning of this video. Now let's get into the actual transcription itself. A really important thing that we have to have 
is is to understand the sound that Ron is getting here too. And please listen to this recording a ton. Listen to how Ron is playing uh, long notes, beautiful, long, sustained notes with really clear attacks. Where he's putting these skips too is another matter, right? They're written as eighth notes in this particular transcription. They're not straight eighth notes, obviously, and they're not even just triplet eighth notes. There's another thing that's going on with Ron's feel. So we'll do the best we can here today, but, um, but still checking out the note choices and the rhythmic choices that Ron is doing here, I think is really beneficial. So let's play through the first chorus. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. to this flat five thing which is really super hip and it works with the melody so inside of all of this if you can hear that melody happening it, it's really cool So you hear those different root choices and how they they fall in line with that melody and they just enhance the melody and are outside of the norm of the typical changes that we play. Okay, so again, we have long notes, we have these skips, but there's still this real emphasis on one and three being our big beats. All right, especially the first four bars. This is what the melody right here. One, two, D. One, two, three. One, two, D. One, two, D. One, two, D. One, two, D. Right? So it really fits, and we're seeing those changes that we just checked out earlier. It just makes your ear pop up, right? To hear those different roots like that. So I love it. Let's look at the next chorus now. All right? So the root movement we've already checked out and we can see some similarities rhythmically. We see again this bounce of playing one and three big time, these big long sustain as legato and connected as we can possibly get. And then Ron has this other thing entirely, of course, with the sound that he gets and the attack and articulation, but doing the best I can. <laughs> Right? So let's play this second chorus here along with the metronome, try to make it feel right. I've got my metronome set at 62 beats per minute, by the way, and I'm calling it beats two and four, just for practice. Here's that second chorus. One, two, one, two, three. so great and then as I was mentioning earlier too they alternate between playing a chorus in F and then playing a chorus in C back to F back to C and it just gives us this beautiful lift Houston person's playing is sublime and just I mean it's so much goodness in that please please listen to that recording so much okay so just a couple points of interest here um, is that leading into this second chorus Ron has this like signature this little like rhythmic muted thing that leads into beat one. It's it something like that. It's really hard to hear just from the recording. But that gets us into the top of this. Now the B natural, again, we talked about this a little bit. The B natural is like a tritone. So right but you can 
can kind of hear the, like a little bit of the melody on top of that, right? All right, so we've got that B7, sharp 11. These are just guesses on the, the what you want to call the chords. Leave in the comments what you think these chords actually are. I'm really just a big fan of the root progression that Ron is doing here and how he's making it sound like it's got tension and release and how it's moving forward the whole time. It's beautiful. So B, B flat, A, A flat, D flat, G flat, and then a walk up to the four chord. Big times, we're still in a two feel, and that's based around rhythmically around the melody. Now he's playing a D7 right there. And just giving that extra lift rhythmically. Using this open string to bridge back down into the lower register out of, out of playing higher here. Now that right there, the triplet, it sounds like he's playing all of that. A lot of times Ron will do things like with uh, pull-offs. It could be it sounds particularly on this point. So he's got a lot of key elements in here. He's playing obviously where he's hearing the beat and how it fits against with uh, what where Houston person is playing is just really interesting too. Houston's like he's laying back in that in that beautiful big beat that Ron is, is laying down. Let's play this bass line one more time through and then we'll say goodbye. All right, let's try it out. One, two, one, two, three, go. So a lot of really great, useful information in there that obviously just sounds beautiful to listen to, but it's stuff that we can put into our wheelhouse too when we're playing at a two feel. Try to get this dance in there, find where these skips are, do some analyzing of the bass lines that you're hearing. Transcribing is great too, but really play along with this as much as possible. If you can, if you can memorize this and play along with Ron, you're gonna start to feel that just way more deeply. So the transcription's a great place to start. But as soon as you can, start getting away from that, just playing with this recording. And it's really gonna to come together in a different way. So that's it. Thanks so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Bob Debu here for Open Studio. Thanks for being with me. If you're interested in what we were doing today too, consider checking out the Bass Access Pass. It's a great feature over here at openstudiojazz.com where you, for a monthly fee, a really low monthly fee, you can check out all of the great bass courses by Christian McBride, Ruben Rogers, myself, some trio stuff with Peter Martin that's just great. And uh, we also have a weekly guided practice session and a really great online community too. So it's a lot of fun and uh, check it out. All right, until next time, happy practicing. Peace. <laughs>